So now let's figure out how much nitrogen gas this reaction would use up using the same approach. So the same exact information. Let's try to work out on paper using the same notation. In grams? Yeah. Good point. How many grams of nitrogen gas is used? I still messed up. This isn't 68 moles, it's 68 grams. So actually, we never actually got, um, going back for a second, we never got any numbers to put into the table. So that the uh, start change end table is kind of useless on this problem. We don't need the start change end table for this problem uh, because we're going, we never actually calculated moles, we just buried that inside the conversion. We just figured out grams. So we don't really, we're not really even using the start change end table for this problem. Okay. So we know that we have to ask what is our starting information. So what's the starting information that you're using? 68 over 17 moles of NH3. Now that sounds like a ratio, not starting information. What was this, what's the piece of information that we're starting with in this conversion? Grams. 68 grams of NH3. 68 grams of NH3? Yeah, not over anything, yeah. just 68 grams. Now that is one possible starting information. What's the other piece of information we could start with here, besides the 68 grams of ammonia? Um, we could start with the grams of each other. Yeah, how many grams is that? Um, Which is a smaller number. Yeah. So we're going to do ourselves a favor on the test by using this number rather than the 68 number. Okay. okay, we've talked about how you can convert from a starting material to a product, but you can also convert from one starting material to another starting material. You can convert from anything in the equation to anything else. You just want to make the conversion that's simplest. Well, it'll probably be easier to work with this, especially because this is a smaller number and a smaller molecular weight. Okay, so our starting information here is 12 grams. Of H2. All right, and now let's work out on paper the rest of the conversion. assuming it's going in the forward direction? Well, it's the same problem as before. Yeah.
let's talk about this together now. When we want to pay close attention now to what is the best order for working these steps out. Um, one step that I think you guys might have left out is the very first step, which is to identify the target units. What are our target units here? Good. Now maybe you did identify that mentally, but we should write it down on paper. And where should we write it down? We should write it down far to the right on our piece of paper. So during the test, you have to be careful when you set these up so you can have enough room. You need to have your starting material separated from your, um, your answer over here so you can have plenty of room on the test. Um, the key thing is you want to set this up so there's plenty of room between your starting information and your product here so we, uh, we can work on this neatly. Okay, so we should actually physically write down the target units. The next step after you physically write down the target units is to write down your starting information. So what are we using here as our starting information? 12 grams of H2. Yeah, 12 grams of H2. We could have used 68 grams of ammonia, but we rejected that because it's a more complicated number than 12 grams of H2. So we wrote down the 12 grams of H2. Notice that the starting information is not a fraction. It's just a number. All right, now we're going to write down our first conversion ratio. What units do I need down here? Grams of H2. And what units do I put up here? Yeah. We know that to use these formulas, we need to get into moles. Okay. Uh, and now, what number? What number should I put in here? Two grams of H two. And what number up here? One. Yeah. Notice that I put the units first, and only then do I put in the numbers. So I'm, uh, we're trying to go through very step by step what the best order is here. So I'll put in two, and I'll put in here the number one. A lot of people have a bad habit, which is that as soon as they write down a unit. They write down the number one next to it. But we don't know whether this number is going to be one or not. So we don't want to be in the habit of automatically writing down the number one. First, you write down the units with no numbers at all, and then you figure out where, if anywhere, there should be a one, and where, if anywhere, there should be other numbers. In this case, it makes sense to put the one on the top, because the periodic table tells us about one mole of the substance. So that would give us this. Now I'm going to cancel these units to show that I've made progress, and now I'm in moles of the hydrogen. All right, and now I could, but I will not do this division. We should not do the division because maybe it'll cancel later on. Doing the division now is just going to confuse us. It's going to give us more numbers that are hard to process. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not at my target unit yet, right? These are not my target units, so I need to keep writing down conversion ratios. So my advice is write down all the conversion ratios before you do any calculations. Write down all the conversion ratios and only then do the calculations. So now I need to write down another conversion ratio. I'm going to start with the bottom. What unit should I put down here? Because I need to cancel these units up here. And what units would I put up here? Yeah. All right, and now what numbers do I use? Now again, a lot of people have a bad habit that as soon as they write down this, they write down the number one next to it. Well, now it totally messes us up, because there is no number one down here. So you write the units first, and only then do you figure out what the units are. There might not be any number ones, but in this case, there was a number one on the top, and a three on the bottom. Okay, now am I done? No, because I now I have moles of nitrogen, and that's not my target units. This is why we have to write the target units first, because otherwise we don't know when we're done. Um, so I need another conversion ratio. What unit should I put down here? Right, moles of N2, and how about up here? Grams of N2. Right. As soon as possible, we want to produce the target units. When this is the first time that we were able to do that, we're just following this pattern down here, grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B. Um, what number should I put in here? If you looked up nitrogen in the periodic table, you would see the number 14. Well, one nitrogen weighs 14, so two nitrogens weigh 28. 